Well, in February, a York Daily Record report detailed how longtime West York High School principal Janet May was stepping down only to be given an annual salary of $125,000, except she won't be allowed to work for the school district. That and a handful of other recent changes at West York School District caught the eye of our Auditor General, Eugene De Pasquale, who joins us this morning on the Fox 43 Capitol Beat. Uh, first off, thank you for uh, joining us Absolutely. this morning. Uh, this brand new, this is brand new information right. um, that your office is just now announcing an audit right. into the West York School District. Why? Well, there, I understand there's a new superintendent and there's a big transition going on. A lot of taxpayers are concerned about the buyout of uh, now the former principal, uh, Ms. May. So, we, look, th these are allowed to happen, but they have to happen according to the public school code. And my job is not to say whether they should or shouldn't do it, but to make sure that they complied with the public school code. Because people are pretty upset to the idea that someone would be able to get paid a salary and not have to do their job. And it's important to know, we literally just received uh, this information, so we have not had the chance to follow up yet with uh, West York. But we do want to details some of the other recent involvements and changes with the West York administration. Uh, 19 year assistant mm -hmm. superintendent Paula Rudy left that job for a kindergarten position in the district without having a full vetting. Middle school principal Brad Cerner resigned in March. Uh, and when you've audited school districts before, uh, is this normal to have this type of change over this quickly? Um, I, it, it does happen. Um, it's, again, usually when super, new superintendents come in, they make some changes, so that's understandable. We just need to make sure that they're following all the laws and doing it, uh, doing it by the book. Um, and again, when you get into the question of, and I've been critical of this in the past with other districts, this is when you have these buyouts and someone isn't, doesn't have to work for their salary, there is a, usually the taxpayers are pretty upset about that. You mentioned the taxpayers, and you live in West Manchester right. Township. This is your school district right. that you live in. This is your right. taxpayer money. Is this a conflict of interest of you to audit this uh, school district? No, I mean, we've got to do this by the book. Look, we're going to have a team of three auditors that are going to go in. It'll be from our school audit bureau. Um, I've given them the direction of what to look at. This is how we would go about it any other district. You've also said that West York will undergo a... Um, I guess an overview of sexual uh, discrimination yeah. and uh, everything that you've brought up in the school safety task force from, uh, a, a, I guess, a month ago. I guess two questions. First, is there anything that has, leads you to believe that there's no. anything uh, sour going on within the school district currently? And big picture, what have you learned within the first month of the task force being created? Uh, two things. Number one is uh, for the West York, no. This is what I made my commitment to is that is post the, uh, the shooting in Parkland, Florida. Every school district we go into, whether there is a suspicion that something could be wrong or not, we're gonna do the full school safety audit because we believe every child has, we, we need to be doing everything in my department to make sure every child is in, as safe as possible. That's number one. Number two, what we're hearing from teachers, and because we have our second meeting today in the Phoenixville area, we're getting a lot of good feedback on school design, how to better coordinate with law, um, law enforcement, and also the need for drills, because look, kids are kids, and if they don't practice the drills, right now we have four fire drills a year that's required in school districts across Pennsylvania, but no active shooting or any other type of emergency drills. One of the things that we're thinking through is maybe it's, you know, one fire alarm drill or one fire drill or maybe two, and then two others for working on something else. When do you anticipate having a, a full set of uh, rather recommendations or guidelines uh, to come forward out of this? We're going to have six total meetings across the state. We already had one that was actually in York County, um, so that was sort of the South Central one. We're going to have one in the Southeast today. We'll have four others, and soon after the conclusion of those four, we'll be giving recommendations to the General Assembly. Lastly, I want to ask you about one of the things that you've been uh, such a, a proponent for, and that's legalizing uh, recreational marijuana yeah. in the state as, as what you feel is a, a taxable cash cow, right. if you will. Uh, just this week, uh, former uh, House Speaker Republican John Boehner yeah. came out and said that he would be for it as right. well. Uh, when you hear that, um, what does that mean to you? And furthermore, is there anything, any uh, thing that you see from a legislation standpoint? I know you don't yeah. make the legislation, but pushing for more legislation uh, here in PA. Uh, I, the two things. Number one is the public is way ahead of the politicians on this. We would, as a state, bring in about $350 million a year in new tax revenue by regulating and taxing marijuana. And now, just to show you how the politics of this work, uh, it looks like Governor Cuomo is going to have a primary in New York. His primary opponent said 
Um, she is for regulating and taxing marijuana. Within 24 hours, Governor Cuomo is preparing to support regulating and taxing marijuana. The public is w well ahead but of the do politicians. do you have any hope that that's going to happen here in Pennsylvania? You can have a Democratic no. governor that might support it, but when you have the, uh, a Republican majority in the House and Senate, it doesn't matter. You always have to have hope. Auditor General Eugene DePasquale, as always, we appreciate you stopping by. Uh, we're going to go talk Pittsburgh Pirates baseball right now. Absolutely. First place in the NL Central. Uh, Fox Shaky bullpen, though. We got to we got to figure out the <laughs> the, the middle relief stuff. We got to figure that out. At least we've got the Penguins. Fox That's 43 absolutely. Morning News. We'll be right back.